Hello, I'm Sue Sorensen. Thanks to whoever decided to invite me to be part of all of this. I'm grateful. All the best to Turnstone for many years of fine publishing and all the best also to everyone in our local writing community here in Winnipeg. I'm going to read two poems that I've never read in public before that are unpublished. I have had poems published in places like CV2 Room and the New Quarterly. Uh, these two poems um, are sort of stream of consciousness prose poems. The first one, Village Vanguard, was written long ago, about 25 years ago, on a trip to New York City with my new husband, a honeymoon trip of sorts, and also a jazz pilgrimage. There's a night spot called Village Vanguard that opened in 1935. It's the oldest jazz club in New York, and I'd always dreamed of going there, and so we did. Music and the other arts also play a part in the second poem called Penciled In. This poem has its origin in a day a few years ago when a woman was trying to write in the Strong Badger coffee shop in the west end of Winnipeg and her ex-husband walked in to have coffee with someone. So first, Village Vanguard. Red Velvet Village, chairs of horns and reeds. The place is small, ordinary, but the stools once held up bones of heroes who kept track of their debts on file cards, borrowed money to buy heroin. This is a private chapel with smokers in the back. I don't know the other worshippers, and it is axiomatic to me that jazz here leads to God somehow, or is God somehow. Everyone should be in love with me because I am here, hold my hands open to the gods, and sun pours in. Confusion of deities, my confusion is nothing, nothing. In 1961, Bill Evans played I Loves You, Porgy, exquisite in this room to the talkers in the audience, irreverent smack of glasses, applause, inadequate sound marred by someone laughing, scraping back a chair. In the next year or so, Bill Evans will shoot up, hit a nerve in his right arm, will play the vanguard with only left hand. His claim is drugs help him understand his alcoholic father. I come back to Evans from furrowing a brow over Charlie Parker, who I can admire but never love. Evans said some music made him worry about the state of the world. I think he wanted to put it right while Parker was listening to the inside, not the outside of a chord. It hurts too much to stay in there for long. Parker and Bud Powell, both stoned, incapable of the stage, bird calling forlornly Bud Powell. But Powell, Breakheart. We were looking for automats today. They are all gone. This is Breakheart too. But we see Art Deco lobbies, wander around, chins in the air, grin at one another. The village is gray, cement, garbage, graffiti, a pizza place with the obligatory bars that roll down at night. We stop over all sorts on our way to the small shrine and go down, down, and it is just as I hoped it would be, flatted fifths and double time. Penciled in. Door opens, consents before see you. I am on to the sharp tendons of your performance, your voice, a spirit lantern that tells instantly how dark has previous been the room. Your step, the intake and breath of an excellent tenor, imperceptible before the aria that induces weeping jags from the matrons in the mezzanine, the very way you distribute your weight on the floor, an Ansel Adams, a Rivera, a firm, confident movement toward this place where I am, where I have still not turned my head. But there's a movement of your sweet hips that spells the Carpe Diem guys, early Yates, and unfortunately for me, Millet, and I have still not even laid eyes on you, so achingly familiar, so gone. Your self-assured dance gets 
Joe Beam, Sonny Rollins, quick step of a man who scoffs at middle age, brings today's bright plumage into the corner of my left eye. So I wince and pack up my things. Time to remove my words from the orbit of your scorch. Out of the beam of your flaring spring green victory. Not even once, gazing at the still perfect angles of your siren beauty, I shake a paw, obedient before the superior giftedness of my betters. And if I were to look at your eyes, I would have to move beyond this scratching, this poem that pencils in, only vaguely, the quietly wicked splendor of your entrance into a coffee shop where one might have thought oneself safe from your sheen. And I know when my art falls short, so I retreat while you plie. You execute a perfect everything from a standing start. You pull the entire downtown of this city into your gravitational field, while every citizen is gratified that you favor them with this dance, this riveting stanza of perfection, this exhibition of all that any man of any type of handsome faithlessness could ever hope to be. Happy birthday, Turnstone Press. 45 is a big deal, so congratulations. I'm Nathan Duick, and I published this book in 2004. And it was an incredible privilege and quite an honor to find my name listed at the same publishing house that brought us your David's Arneson, your Dennis's Cooley, your Robert's Croach. And it also kind of felt like a Mennonite rite of passage since Turnstone has published such great Mennonite writers as your Armand's Weeb, your Patrick's Friesen, your Dyes Brandt, even Andrew Unger, and my name is listed among those luminaries, the Literati. I'm gonna read two poems from this book as best I can, because it has been a while since I wrote them. Mother, I am your little Willie, daydreaming under noonbeams of light, birds, and you. To Belle, enjoyed seeing you in the morning. I promise you only a true and loving heart a sincere and lasting devotion, a never failing, but an ever increasing love. Muses didn't abuse me before you. I'm a best man standing aside the wedding, a witness to the sunburnt bouquet. I am sand melting hour by hour. And the second poem is also entitled, and it's on page 10. A shame to record it all, write it daily with frailty and become purer in thought and word and act. Saw the lady in the berth below making her toilet. In a cup of spirit I saw eyes, I saw her finger with mine, a round band bound king and this bell. I saw her close, a light on her lip becoming cheeky. No man or onanist has ever known this lady. To do the big work of the nation I feel I should be married. Two trolls on the town stroll down onto it, few bells sigh, is that all you got? Oh, how hell's chains bear on a man faltering. See men sink down the hole. Three shillings, an angel, and a half bottle of wine. Saddened I, a little willy came, ring, I should have, knocked up, rang, ladies long ago. My Jezebel and I whining a little time together, a little hymn and a little prayer. Lady, you saw me, and you gave me swollen eyes. And they told me I could never keep a diary. That's Kingsmere, and I'm Nathan. Thanks so much for watching. Also, thanks to Dennis Cooley for editing this. I really appreciate it.